Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can share data across open tabs using the broadcast channel API. So using this API, you can make sure that pages open in different tabs stay in sync. So the API will share data across pages of the same origin, but it won't share data to pages on a different origin. So on another domain, or that are not using the same scheme as the page that's broadcasting data. So to share data from one page to another, you want to create a new instance of a broadcast channel object. And when calling the constructor, you need to pass a single argument into it. And that is the name of the channel that you want to create. So other pages will be able to receive data from this page if they listen out for this particular broadcast channel. Now the object that calling the constructor returns, it contains methods on it that allow you to send and receive messages on that channel so that we can control the posting of a message from the UI. I'll embed the posting of a message inside an event listener, listening out for a click on the broadcast button. So to send data across the channel, you call the post message method on the broadcast channel object that's been created, passing in the data that you want to post. Now a message is not just limited to string format. It could also be a JavaScript object or array, and it could even be a file. So I'll create a new file here using the file constructor. So the first argument is the file content, then the file name. And finally, you need to specify the MIME type for the file. So in this case, it's plain text. So this page is set up to post messages across the channel, but not to receive them yet. So to receive a message, you have to listen out for it. And there are two ways of doing that. So you can define a function as the value of on message, and that will fire when a message is received. Or you can add an event listener to the broadcast channel object, listening out for a message event. So now when a message is received on this channel, this callback function will fire and you have available to you the data that's being passed in to post message on the data property on the event object that's being made available when a message is received. So if I click on the broadcast button and take a look at what's logged to the console on another page on the same origin, it's all that data that I passed into post message. And if I click broadcast on this page, then it broadcasts that data again to the other page now. Now you may have noticed that if you broadcast a message, it broadcasts it to other pages that are listening to that channel, but not the current page itself. But in some use cases, you want an action to occur on the page that sent the message as well as all other tabs that are open. So you might want to do this if a user clicks on a logout button and you want to redirect the user to another page across all open tabs. So I'll rename this broadcast channel. I can do that for all instances using Control Shift L in Visual Studio Code. And on the logout channel, I'll just post a message and a pattern you can use to respond to the logout across all open tabs, including the one that sent the message is to define a function in which you'll do the logout processing. And then when the button is clicked on the current page, call the handle logout function to handle that on the current page. And then inside the event listener or the logout channel, also call the handle logout function. So now handle logout is being called on pages receiving the message as well as on the current page. So all that's left to do is do something inside the handle logout function. In this case, I'll just log a message to the console. 
So in practice, you might be using this to change the view or navigate to a logout page. And you can see from the logs to the console that this action would occur across all open tabs. Now, another use case for this is to keep data in sync across several open tabs that you can use to update the UI or the value of a variable. So now here on page load, I'm fetching time data from the world time API because it's constantly updating. And I'm going to create a dedicated channel for syncing that data across tabs. So when new data comes in from a fetch request, I'm going to post a message to the data channel, passing in the received data and using the same pattern to handle the data update on the current page, as well as on other tabs. So each page, it still needs to listen out for a message coming through on the data channel. And when that occurs, want to call the handle data update function, passing into it the data that's been received. And finally, the data update function needs to be defined. And in here, I'll just log the data that's being passed to it. So if data comes through via one tab, then it's communicated to all other open tabs. So the data that's being logged across tabs remains current. Now, if you're finished sending and receiving messages on a specific channel in a tab, then it's good practice to call the close method. This disconnects the broadcast channel object from the channel that it's connected to, saving memory in the background. Now, support for the broadcast channel API is very good across modern browsers, but because it's relatively new, if you want to share data across tabs, in older browsers that don't support the broadcast channel API, then you might want to take a look into this library that falls back on browser storage methods when the broadcast API is not detected. So if you do install and import this library into your project, you can use the same syntax as we were using in this tutorial. The only catch is that the data when you receive a message is directly available on the parameter, not on a data property. Now, this isn't a perfect polyfill, but a way that you can replicate similar functionality via browser storage. And because local storage, it only accepts string data. You can only pass data from one tab to another using the fallback that is able to be stringified. So this is a solution that you might be interested in if it's important to you to support older browsers. And that's it for this tutorial. So I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.